You can't do it alone. Nobody can do this by themselves. It takes team efforts. It takes a good leadership team. The leadership team this year was phenomenal. They still continue working hard every day behind the scenes. A lot of things that you guys don't see to help make this event a success. The team captains go back to the team, go back to the place of the business, his friends, his family, and encourage them to get involved. And we are just so excited. You know, this team has got some great things going on from a production standpoint. I think you can be very, very pleased to be a part of this event this year. And I'm excited for everybody to be a part of it. And I just want to extend that personal thank you for everything that you've done so far this year. <clears throat> so where are we at? As of today, we had 96 teams registered. Again, keep in mind, that's pretty pretty phenomenal when you consider the way we structure our team on that. These are 96 teams. Some of these are really huge teams that we have. We might be classified as four or five teams. So when you don't hear us talking about the 130s and the 140s, don't get discouraged. The participation in terms of people participating in the event is up. Okay, so we're at 1,411 participants. That's about on target where we were last year. Um, and we continue to see people adding on every day. So far, $190,000. And y'all, that's just what's on the list. I know for a fact that we've done a lot more. Becky said she's collected money. She'll burn a desk around collecting money. No one's collected money. We have people holding money because it's a secret. Everybody wants to know how much they raise, right? So, but, but to have that just on our website that's posted already is phenomenal. And again, great job to everybody. It's never too late to join. If somebody asks you, and I'm working on the team right now, I'm signing them up. I just got accepted last week. Kind of a friends and family, I think they're part of a carnival club, they're afloat, and they're new to relay, and not new to experience, they're new to be in a team. And we're working with them, and they're already fundraising. The kids got some great ideas, they're going to probably be at a men's night, primary fundraising, but they're doing some other things. So it's never too late. So if you're somebody that wants to get involved, y'all all know how to get in touch with me, or Bernadette, or Becky, go on the website, whatever we got to do. Never too late. Sponsorship. Again, I'll, I'll say it, it never ceases. It's amazing. This community comes together. Right now, we're going through one of the worst economical downturns we've seen in a long time. In our community. But yet, but yet, our goal this year was 60000 for sponsorship. And, uh, Uh, we have secured eighty-seven thousand dollars in sponsorship. That is phenomenal. And that's been collected, committed, as well as in kind. So we have media sponsors that are in kind, different types of sponsorship, but eighty-seven thousand total. We got to go with sixty. So again, continue to surpass. Educational signs are still available for the teams to sell. These are signs that go around the track. They're $100. They're really simple to do. You can turn them in at the end of the day night. You get their little card on their sign. Uh, remember, those, those, as all sponsorship, go to your team is over. If you've got somebody that comes and says, hey, how can I, what can I do? I had a lady a couple of weeks ago. What, what can I do? I'd like to do something. I so want you to do a couple of educational signs. Just that's perfect. $200. So don't pass that up. Put it toward your team total. I'd like to talk a little bit about our survivors update our ceremony that we had just a couple of weeks ago. I want to thank Susie Knight who chaired that event and all of our volunteers that came out to help. I don't know if any of you guys had an opportunity to be there with the survivor as a guest. It was phenomenal. It was just very, very emotional. A great guest speaker, survivor. And we had a lot of fun. We did cry a little bit, you know, kind of the way we do things. But it was a great ceremony, it was a great celebration. Our survivors were very, very excited. It's a little different than we've done in the past, which is what we're known for. We don't stay still. We all have all of our different events. So 
It was, it was really good. <laughs> you guys remember a few months back I talked about the VIP, the online fundraiser, and I said if we can get people committed to online fundraising, we're going to see that's an area that we believe was wide open for us, but it worked. As of the last check, we have over 75 participants that raised at least $100 or more online, and I know we're not done, that are going to qualify for our VIP test. I was thinking we'd get about 50. We doubled our online fundraising this year over last year, just by that one little caveat, offering that little thing VIP. Apparently, people like the kool -Aid. That's what we've been serving in the VIP <clears throat> Once I got some people excited, they got out there, and just as I suspected, not only did they raise a hundred, a lot of people raised a couple of thousand online. So our online fundraising is at $21,000 as of today. That's double what we did at this time in March of last year. So we started to see some things really work. Maybe a little publicity update. I'm probably already seen billboards out. Right? Uh, newspaper, if you haven't seen it, it's an article in What Now magazine. Gumbo has a big article in it. I don't know that that's come out yet. Yes, it's a two page. Two page article in Gumbo. I would encourage you to go get those and read up on some pretty interesting readings in there. Uh, they did a little excerpts from Thibodeau, Top of Fluge, Us, I think maybe some Market City stuff too. So. Yeah, I'm just going to be hearing me talking there with those people that didn't talk to as well. And the ads in the are going to run tomorrow and Sunday. Yeah, so our ads, Curry ads tomorrow, <laughs> which is Wednesday and Sunday, the big days for paper, right? So those in the ads uh, run, we're going to do HTV next Tuesday night, the 21st, and then we're waiting on the slot for radio one more. So we're getting our publicity, we're getting the word out, get everybody encouraged and come to the event. While well, I'm thinking about that, another thing that we're doing different this year in terms of our event and getting the public to the event, we're, we have a team, we put together a team that's going to go out, they're called Road to Relay Team, I think that's what I call them, uh, and they're going to go out on Saturday morning, and we're going to post banners and signs and little uh, this way to relay type stuff at uh, Highway 90 and 182, Highway 90 and 311. And then they're going to map those people to the Civic Center. So they're not just going to see a sign that says, hey, relay this way. If they get off on 311 and about a mile later, they have another sign. Yeah, you're heading in the right direction. As they get closer to the Civic Center, the signs will get more frequent. They're going to get bigger. And we'll probably do more colorful type stuff. Balloons, maybe, uh, whatever we can do. So that they know that they're getting close to relay. And they're coming to our event and coming to your group and to spend some money and support us in what we do. We never did that before. We're going to try this year and see how that works. So that's pretty encouraging. Um, any questions so far? I'm just kind of going through you know, like the information you get out. Okay, so let's look at your activities. You should have a schedule of activities in front of you. The team captain, I think it's really, really important that you can either post this in your campsite, get it out to your team members. So that they know what's going on. So our event draws over 10,000 people. It's so busy. There's so much going on that sometimes we don't realize, oh my goodness, I missed that. Or I would have liked to have more seen what they were doing with this. So, in addition to paper copy, this year at our event, we're working on electronic notifications as well. So, in Relay Central, in the entrance, we're expecting to have, we're going to work out all the details on the electronics, two big screen TVs. That's how we're rolling these events. We'll be rolling on them as well as our sponsors. We'll be rolling through that. Any message we want to give to participants should be programmed that day to roll through there. Um, so the, the, the key there is to keep everybody up to speed with what's going on and not missing anything. So, We'll get into the logistics side of, of all of this first, I mean, in a little while, but this is for our schedule activities. You know, campsite, this event's gotten so big, we actually start. Oh. 
Okay, you want to cover that? You want to cover Okay, uh, we're going to go to we're going to go to logistics instead, real quick. Um, Nick's got an issue; he's got to leave, so he, he's running logistics this year. You guys know. Why don't you go ahead and cover what you got, and I'll throw in some stuff and see the next one. All right, hello everybody. Um, I think just like they said, kind of thinking back to what you said earlier, um, the production. I think we changed more from the event to more of a production. But why I started six years ago with logistics to where we are now, we're on a 16 by 16 trailer. And with the help of all of the sponsors, I think y'all been very amazed the way things going to look this year. A few things we want to go over a few reminders. Um, Lunch for all campsites that are cooking. We need to make sure you have a fire extinguisher and camp type. So that way, in case things got cold, we will have other fire extinguishers there, but we can put it out quickly. Um, we ask if you, for your, if you're staying, to bring your own garbage can. We will have some extra garbage bags, and we'll have people coming around and picking up some garbage bags and hauling them all for you. So if you do fill up a can, just tie the bag off, put it in the street, and uh, somebody will come along and pick it up. We'll be monitoring that. We'll have studying space or stage in different areas of the track. Uh, if you haven't uh, issued your uh, input to your campsite request form, please do so in the next two days as soon as possible, preferably, because uh, we're going to lock the map on Friday and anybody who comes out on Thursday. And whoever hasn't submitted a campsite form, we're just going to place you somewhere on the best possible place you have left. Uh, so. Please put it in as quickly as possible so that we can get the best site we have. But a lot of people have it. We appreciate y'all doing so. It really, the map really has taken change, uh, taken change as it is now. Everyone will get their campsite uh, next Wednesday afternoon for camp or bank night. We get a little super paper with your address on it. Uh, this year is a little bit different. Last year we made this number them all from 1 to 160, whatever it was. This year you will have an actual address. So thanks to uh, Baywater Drilling, uh, Butterflies and Fight, Hay uh, Fire Siren, ENT, and Shamrock Management. Uh, they have sponsored all of these streets. So like, I think Shamrock is 101 Shamrock Way is their address. So you will get an address the day of the event. I'm oh, sorry, the bank night. So that way that is your event, uh, your, uh, your address for uh, Flyers, flyers, flyers. We'll have, we have it all tied together so what you're doing will be on the flyers. So that way, if somebody wants a hamburger, they can look and see where hamburgers are, go to that address, and we'll have street signs pointing everyone in the right way to go. Um, it says that we'll have a, we will be doing a production testing at 8 p.m. on Friday night. For those of y'all who haven't been for the events, or even if you have, if you're there at 8 o'clock, don't look. <laughs> Where do you look? Don't say. It. Yeah, if you look, don't say. It. Be surprised. <laughs> now they'll be there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, be surprised. Uh, by it will really be, will be amazing what we have in store for y'all this year. Um, Mr. Renee will be there hopefully Thursday morning. We'll be working on that right at the center. Hopefully Thursday. So anybody who has a tent with Mr. Renee or needs to order a tent with Mr. Renee, please do so quickly because he has three other events to deal with and it'll be very hard to get the last minute tent. Uh, but he will accommodate everyone the best we can, but we'll get him in Thursday. And after that Friday, everybody else who needs to come set their tents up, uh, we'll be able to do so Friday. Uh, and Mr. Day will still be there anchoring people's tents in the ground uh, to make sure they get blown away. Um, if you are cooking with grease or anything like that, we actually bring a pot of plywood or something to put underneath the cooking, whatever you are cooking with, uh, barbecue bed or anything like that, so no grease gets cooked up with the concrete. Yeah, we don't want to upset the service with that. Um, we do have, we will have again the campers on the out perimeter of the event, but just a uh, warning to all people who have campers, if you do tie into the pedestals that are tied onto the event, and if we start to trip breakers, we will actually unplug your camper to keep the event uh, lit. Keep it lit and keep the, the power going to the Our priority is to the event. The campers are a, a, a good secondary thing to have, but if something were to happen and you, we overload the circuit, we will actually unplug your camper to uh, while the event's going on. We'll be unplugging out the event and how we use the drop back. We usually have a problem with that every year. Um, 
Also, if you are people flying, if you're using electric fryers, please try to spread out the fryers from using a one mode because they can't handle that much amperage. They will do one or two, but when you start going to three or four, they'll start tripping breakers and you won't be able to cook very efficiently. Um, anything else? So, if you have any questions or anything, just go ahead and email us. Uh, we'll get the address for you. Um, I said pretty much, I think pretty much everybody who's sitting at a camp rock campsite request form. We've done a very good job of getting everybody where they would like to be. There may be one or two teams that just had to flip to the inside, but they're in the same location. Uh, but we, we try to, to accommodate everybody as best as possible. I think we did a pretty good job on it, which I will see uh, next Wednesday. But if anybody has any questions for me before I run, no? okay. All right. I wish Nick loved he's having some flooding in his neighborhood. Oh, what neighborhood is it? Somebody took it, right? Anybody so they're having some trouble keeping up with all the trains, so he's going to go run and take care of that. So, so while we're on logistics, let me, since we jumped to that, let me go ahead and finish up. One thing you know, every year we always have a problem with is the collection of parks. Um, we made a little change this year. We are going to try to have some boxes out for you as well. I'm encouraging everybody to bring hands if you have them. We will provide the bags, but we we'll also increase the amount of facilities that run around picking up garbage and we're going to do curbside service, uh, like we spoke about. So if you get full, just, just if you see if garbage is getting full, you don't mind just tie it, set it next to you, next to you can, put your new bag in, and then we'll come around and pick it up. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, and we're going to do the two dumpsters, one on each side, to give them better access. One of the things that we found out is things you don't think about. And the guy says, you know, you'll put the dumpsters away from the event, right? We don't want to put in our event. But he says, that's much further, that much further. They've got a wall to come before they can come back and make another round. So it's good to talk about these things. So also, something new. And even Becky and leadership team don't know about this yet. I just came up in terms of it this morning. Um, I know. Sorry. But the entrance, okay, so so if you could just kind of think out of the civic center, and I know, big building, right? Uh, and there's a, um, a, there's a driveway that comes on each side, right? Before you get to the civic center and have that breezeway, this driveway right here will be blocked off. No one will be able to come in. We're going to block it off. You have to get to your campsite. Now, we're not going to block this off until Saturday afternoon, four-ish time frame. It'll be an exit only. We'll let you out if somehow you manage to get in that area. I don't know how you would, but if you do have a vehicle over here, we'll get in there earlier. We'll, we'll let you out. We won't let you get from there. Uh, you can go around the other side, come in. And let me tell you why we're doing this. We want everybody to come in and we'll have signage on the, with the driveway on this side. Come through the breezeway <laughs> under the Civic Center. When you get to the event, you're going to be forced to turn to the right, but that's your drop off point. We've got to drop off survivors right there. The cars are going to actually drive up, drop the survivor off. We're going to have people out there to help with the survivors to the right, and the driver who will park the car. If you have a guest, or someone on your team has an elderly guest, or someone who has uh, handicapped needs or whatever, they'll have a, a good drop off point. So we're going to drop off right in front of our green entrance, right in front of Relay Central. And we'll have people there and volunteers to assist getting people out. And so that's going to hopefully give us a flow of traffic, and then parking is kind of a peak. Good luck, right after that. But we're going to keep we're going to keep that block off so we don't have all this crisscross of traffic, and then it's going to be a one way in and then around. Um, so it's really important that you go back and tell your teams that because we're going to station a unit there, and we're not going to let you. In. So we don't ever like to make anybody angry. We really don't, but it's really, really important to just to the top of this and then start making some of this flow work. And that'll be later in the afternoon. Like four, four o'clock Saturday <laughs> afternoon. You know, that's about the time you shouldn't be driving on the track anyway. If you're not set up by four, you're already in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's happened though. We've had people show up at 4 30, you know, they're inside track and they're trying to get set up. And I think it's exceptions, and we always will. We'll find a way to make it work. Oh, it's so much life, so much easier. To just get it. We're starting to load in on Thursday. So by 
Friday, stage is set up, production is set up. We're going to do a run through Friday night on our production side, the lighting and all the other great things we've got going on. we got all day Saturday <coughs> to pick up the pieces. The late comers, the people have, they don't need a big setup. You know, we got all day. We used to love this thing in just on Saturday. It is hard for Friday night. It's hard for Friday night. Now we have Thursday. So next year I'll have to take a moment to make it. So uh, what else? Some logistics. Um, any questions on logistics that you have as a team? We're very fortunate in this event. We have power and water that helps every cancer. Like they said, depending on who's next to who and who's doing what, it can be a good problem. We don't have to worry about generators and tanks of water. We really, really blessed to have that. Okay, let's go back to activities. So hopefully you have this in front of you. Um, as, it, as it says here, we, we will begin setting up our campsites Thursday and Friday. That's the big tents, the, the stage, production, those things. But you are more than welcome. You have a tent to come out Friday afternoon to set up. We do have a contract with the Supernate to hold everybody down. So to let it go away. I understand there were a couple of tents last year that didn't get that done, and I apologize, but if you see someone with vinyl products walking around and you need your tent bolted, don't be shy to ask. We pay for that service. And so, make sure you get your tent bolted down. What's the name? Vinyl, is it vinyl products? Vinyl products? Okay. So getting into Saturday, again, through the day, and we all last minute campsite set up, get everybody set up, everybody happy, everybody cooking, I'm sampling food, and all the other good stuff. And uh, at 3 o'clock, our team registration begins. Another change for you if you're a returning team. You're not going to register in the Civic Center. You're going to register in Relay Central, which is our big entrance. And we'll trust me, on will be Got crazy colors to it, and it lights at night. You'll see it at 3 o'clock. So that's our main entrance, and that's where you're going to register. We need all vehicles off the track, out of the event parameter, by 4 o'clock. We start on time. And I don't want to be moving vehicles at the last minute and, or locking people in. And then you're there until 2 a.m. You're not moving. That's what we start to need. No vehicle should ever, ever come onto the track once the event starts. Even if you're breaking camp, which I hope you're not, if you're breaking camp, please do not. I don't want a competition. I don't want all to have to come tell you you cannot do what you think you can do. Okay, that causes problems when you want that. So just, better just to tell everybody straight up front. Don't come once at 4 o'clock, so 2 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning, you're not driving on the track. So coming into the event. Maybe a little earlier, maybe 1 a.m. this year. Um, at 4.30, our first band starts Southern Cross. We've been opening up for in years. The latest time every year, all of our band by the way. It's a good time to be set up. That's all I need to set up early. Enjoy some of this good music and relax until the ceremony starts. You know, so they'll start playing at 4.30. I was going to tell you that we have a jazz player that's going to actually start playing at 4.30. Uh, Frank Ball contacted me. He wants to set up and play jazz. So we'll actually be playing with three or four thirds. Okay, all. Awesome. So, so like everybody's saying, come out and enjoy the music while you set it up. Yeah, that's cool. So we'll have a little jazz. Have that change, so I'm going to Going from three o'clock. So once you start registering, we'll have a little music for you. All right, that's all. That's why this is grass. You're going to say grass on Sunday morning at the paper. No, no. <laughs> And listen, no can tip, burn a dish, or send no dance, or it's the end point. Some of us and tables, apparently, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, so moving on. Uh, it's on across 5 o'clock, I open the ceremony. I'll parade the team. Um, team pictures with your family will start. But don't 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 stress over this if you're not there, because you're going to make a laugh when we get you. But they're going to start. The team pictures will be taken on. Butterflies and Bike Drive, which if I remember right, is Barrow Street side, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's where he, that's where the photographer is going to be. To judge your banners this year, we're not going to have you stop 
have the judges look at. You're going to pass, I'm going to take a snapshot. It's going to be electronically sent, and the judges will be sitting and while looking at it electronically, and they'll judge it that way. It slows the event down so long. The judges stop when you want to see them. You take that picture, it'll be sent electronically, they're going to judge it off of the picture. Other pictures that we take, we have a photographer that'll be around to take team pictures. Uh, for you and, and any, any other type of picture you want, you can win the event room, you be around, probably in front of the stage, uh, taking team pictures. And that will also begin at 5 o'clock. Oh, no, I think we'll start taking team pictures earlier. If you're ready, you'll want to take the picture. Get that out there. But she should, be, she should be selling those after the event and 50% of whatever she sells. 50% cover the cost of what takes the picture and the other 50% comes to you. Um, the Southern Cross will continue uh, playing again after our opening ceremony. Uh, something you probably should be aware of is when we present our colors, which we do have five there. When we present our colors this year, in the past we had the color guard in the center of our event come out to the stage. This year, another reason why I'm locking that street off. Our color guard is actually in the breezeway of the season. And they're going to be presented with a surprise for you. Through the breezeway, through Relay Central, onto the track, and then present colors in front of the stage. So be looking for that. That's that opening ceremony. Um, if you're doing uh, for cancer survivor registration, will also, that's not, not different. That will be in the survivor tent, not the survivor tent. That's Bernadette, that's that's t-shirt, by the way. Um, so that will be in the survivor tent at 530. We'll get our, red, our survivors to start registering, and hopefully a little drive through will help out with that. If you're doing food, please, please have it in the Civic Center. Now that is still in the Civic Center, at 6 o'clock. And again, reminder, it's pretty small portion. It's just no real. Our campsite judging begins at 6 30. Another thing you just need to be aware of so you can get all set up and all pretty and everything looks good. They're going to come to you, you don't have to do anything. They're going to walk around, you're going to judge the campsite. Our food judging, food item judging will begin at 6 30. It's kind of a busy time, There's a lot happening. We'll do our introduction of our relay pageant winners, a real quick intro to, to, uh, to recognize them. Our Relay Idol winners will perform. That's always a good, good uh, thing to listen to. And then our dancers of hope will perform. It's all going to happen relatively quick, timed out, so that when we get ready to do our cancer survivor ceremony, we're ready and we're getting we're starting on time. We're fanatic, we're starting on time. I hate to run late. It holds people up, people aren't ready for it, whatever. Last year we ran a little long for our cancer survivor. We just went on that track way too long before we got a morning. So we're keeping on time. Um, that's when we're going to do our uh, Cancer Resource Center presentation and our uh, Pet Cancer Survivor speech, and we'll do the butterfly release. And then our survivors will take you alive. Okay? If you haven't purchased a butterfly yet, it's still available. Get in touch with uh, Butterflies and Bike, get in touch with us, Christy, whatever. I think, what are they, five, six bucks? <laughs> you know, six six uh, and, and you can buy one and, and have it donated to a survivor to make sure every survivor gets a butterfly. Trust it, trust me, I'll help you. Or you can buy one for yourself, for your children, or whatever. But uh, so that's going to happen at that time. Of course, we have our survivors' lap, lap with the families, caregivers' lap, and then we have another band that starts Southern Crosses. Changing off the stage at that time, you know, and so no one, yeah. they're getting ready to start playing. 7 30, live auction. We'll begin at 7 30. Please be sure if you know anybody that wants to participate. We're going to be making announcements. We're not going to leave anybody hanging. Make sure that those those bidders are up there, especially if you saw something that you might want to bid on. Uh, auction items, if your team is donating auction items, make sure you have that form filled out and attached to that auction item. Make sure you bring it to the stage. Bring it at registration, whatever time. Once you get there, that's about the stage, bring it. Set out your way. Don't need to be dealing with that. You have a team to run. One item per team. One item per team. 
and it must have a value of at least a hundred dollars. Very, very difficult to auction off something that's less than that. It's hard to get people to bid on. Make sure that the form is taped on the item. Yeah. So it doesn't fly off. Yeah, don't, don't just like fold, we have to just fold it up and stuff in the corner of the item. Take it. Take it to the item. If for some reason you can, make sure one of us gets that item in front of so that we can take care of him. You can set it up there. That form blows away. First off, I don't know whose team it's for, but we're the people coordinating the auction. We as the auctioneer, you may not even know what the item is. And you may not get the value of what it's worth. He has no clue. Is yeah. anything yeah. <laughs> yeah. Write all that stuff down so I know what it is. Um, as soon as the auction is over, if you're not taking the team picture by then, it's done. We were kind of so open between you know, 4 o'clock in the afternoon to 7 30, we didn't get the team picture done. Um, the luminary ceremony at 9. We have the same thing. We do have some, again, supplies for you as well for that ceremony. We, this is one ceremony I will start with. I will not start this ceremony until every light is out, every radio is turned off, if somebody happens to have a generator that is turned off, because this, to me, is the absolutely would bring us all together and do the and I won't subsidize it any you know, if I have to start at 10 minutes later, or oh, well. Somebody will go to your campsite and say, you know, like that, that, uh, that TV with a guy plugged in, way lights on the airplane. I'm uh, just kidding, no, I'm not kidding, I'm going to plug it up like uh, So please, we'll, again, we're not going to leave you in the dark, we're going to announce that, hey, we can start the luminary ceremony in 30 minutes. Make sure you gather small children. Turn your lights off. Quiet, please. We'll continue to do that. And then when we're satisfied, then we'll start the ceremony. Um, I would also like to let all the teams know that we may hand you a lighter at around 8.30. Um, we don't around with lighters to all the teams, and we ask like every other team or so to walk out to the luminary guys and light the bags in front of your campsite. So if, if one of our EL team members in a green shirt walks up to you and hands you a lighter and says, hey, can you go light your bags? Please go ahead and do that for us because we have over 3,000 bags to light. So it takes that time to do that. And we're one of the ones we're one of the fewer of the dwindling events that actually still use candles. So many have gone to the glow sticks and the little electric candle, battery operated candle. We, we're just traditionalists when it comes to that ceremony. So yeah, over 2,000 bags of lighters. Somebody like hands you a lighter, it's not the light you bought a bit. It's not the light cigarette. It's the light like candle. As soon as you hand the lighter, I mean, go, go start lighting. I'll wait for a signal. Um, of course, we'll have our fireworks following the luminar as we have in the past. And then we have another band that's going to come on called Days Like This. Band, so uh, it's a new band prior event this year. We've always had um, Southern Cross and Yum Yum. This is a new band. <coughs> band contact us. They say, Can we come play? That's your reason. No joke. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our Mr. Relay Beauty Contest. I really, really encourage you to get somebody from your team involved in this. It's a lot of fun when you have more than two or three participants. We'll make it fun with two or three. This is where the guys dress up and come to the beauty contest. It's done by audience participation. We play a song, they dance, and we let it, let it cheer for whoever gets the lot of those cheers. And sometimes we'll have a little dance off between the last two. And we make this a lot of fun. If you get a guy or your team to do this, have them, have them there at uh, 11 o'clock. And then at 11.30, we're doing our relay madness. That's the same thing that we used to have at midnight. It's not a midnight anymore, so we can't call it midnight madness. We've asked the team to bring the prizes for that. Again, when you come to register, you can drop those prizes off right here at registration. These are smaller door prize type things, past t shirts. We've got a lot of kids that participate in this. So they take their relay like today. If you get some relay goodies today, we'll get some door prizes. If you want to donate that, they like that kind of stuff. We've got adults that do it too. They should have no uh, or as much. But uh, that, that's a fun thing where every time we go around the last minute, we call the ticket for the process. 
Uh, and our closing ceremony is at midnight. Again, something new for us this year. We always try to push these event, this event to 2 a.m. We're calling it a 1 a.m. event now. Because of the new models. Thank God for ACS allowing us to do that. But we're going to have a closing ceremony at midnight. What's, what's really cool about this is that's when we really, really get to recognize those teams that have won some of the different events, our sponsors. We get to announce our total, which is why at bank night, we're going to bank night, so here's a minute, we're going to click. You're going to be assigned a con to turn your money in. Another thing new this year. It doesn't mean that you have to stop fundraising, <coughs> but it means that you won't have to come sit in the citizen and wait two hours to turn your money in. You can have a point, 9 o'clock, big spin. For sure, they're turning their money, they're out of the way. 9, 10, our average spins, they got it apart. The next person shows up. You go back to your team, continue fundraising. So what do I do with my money after the event? You know, once the event's over, I just want to, which one? Which one? But what we did is we go two, two, two dates, the week after the event, on Tuesday and Wednesday, right here. On Tuesday, is a, is a lunchtime thing. Becky, what time is that? Tuesday, 11 to 2, right? Tuesday, 11 to 2. You can come turn money. You don't have to hold it at your office. And then on Wednesday, from 4 to 6, I think, you can come here and turn money. We'll still come get it from you. If you call us and let us know. But a lot of teams are asking about that. Well, after my appointment time, can I still turn in money? Number one, yes, you can still turn in money in the city, so if you want to, in fact. Number two, you can come to one of those appointments the week after the event. It's the very following Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll make sure you have exact times when we send the email out the yeah. stuff. So again, some things just to kind of help everybody. All right. Let's do this real quick. These are some reminders. We've been trying to think. If I'm a team captain, what do I need to remove? So let's just talk. Of course, we need to get all your little bags in your bags. They need to be ready to turn in on bank night. Please put them in alphabetical order. Please. We really, really save this a lot of time. If you don't, you're going to the fire. Uh, team captain meeting is April 14th. That's today. If you haven't missed that. Uh, Campsite selection form, we talk about it. If you haven't been able to do it electronically, you want to fill one out, just hard paper today, that's fine. Please get that to us. That's how we get you situated on the map. And as well as your activity form for what you're doing. We heard us talk about this. There's going to be an actual flyer that's going to be passed out to have your address and what you're doing at your site this year. Why is it going to be kind of wandering around looking for it? You don't know where you're at. If we don't have that information, we can't put it on there. We'll put you site, but we may not put you active. When you get here for bank night, <clears throat> please, please, coins are just such a pain. Take some time before you come to bank night. Go to the bank, go to front of the little machine, and give you paper. You know, or money order, or one check, or however it works best for you. But let's do that to avoid those coins. Uh, when you get here for bank night, you're going to find out which camp site address is. Like Nick said, I think you got everybody pretty much where they want to be. Well, pretty close. Just get your address. You're going, if you're turning, if you're participating in a t shirt contest, bring it bank night. Bring it bank night. You're not taking that trip back until later. You get it back at all because they run their collection. Uh, that's when you'll get your. Your, your time, your appointment time for your event night, so when you turn your money in. It's also when you're going to get your purple VIP bracelets and the list of people on your team that made VIP. So you get all of that thing. Uh, the bracelets are the rest of the Oh, they're not purple. They glow in the dark. So they glow in the dark. So yeah. And um, we've set up two days after the event for team members. Okay. Okay. Um, we have a Tuesday night event on Wednesday over here on the Some of this stuff I already covered, relay badges, uh, live auctions, food items, 
team banners. I already covered all that. <laughs> um, but then here, this is a good one. one at the bottom. Every year, I mean, I think, oh, we got to go or I need some sunscreen for my kid, or somebody doesn't realize that they got talked into going to the company today. They don't have a change of clothes. Watch up the pie throwing thing, and their shirts all messed up. So think about these things. And, you know, chairs, even. People show up and they don't have chairs. We don't provide chairs for the entire event. We provide chairs like the Bible did. This year, you're going to see some chairs set up in front of the stage. It's a little bit different. We're working with completions, but. Kind of shied away from that from a safety perspective, so we set up some chairs. We have a lot of visitors coming this year from not only across the state in our division but nationally as well. So we just want to see what our crazy kids do now. So we had a crop the last time I saw about 25 visitors, so we surprised until I walked up to you. Hey, I'm from Alabama. I'm not asking you questions. I'm from Alabama. So, uh, anyway, uh, so that might happen. Uh, but bring the chair, bring, bring all of these things that, that you need to, uh, to make yourself comfortable so that you can last the night, right? Uh, see if you change the year next? Question. Yes, what time does the bank night start? What time does the bank night start? Four o'clock. Right? Four o'clock? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, what Four o'clock. So glad you asked. Next thing on my list, volunteers. Uh, yes, if you're available or everybody you're seeing that's available bank night, uh, they're going to get there probably around 11, I think Becky told me. Uh, Becky, what time do you get here the day of bank night? Everything's here to grab it, to sort out shirts and everything else. Sort shirts, and then we have some older shirts that we're going to be wrapping in rubber bands. Rubber bands, because uh, another little surprise is we just kind of do like a little kind of sports type thing where we have some children just coming and they're going to go around and throw in t shirts. Just for people at our event. So, so we need to wrap those up and get our other t shirts ready. 11 o'clock, hang on, she needs to volunteer. Oh, yeah, yeah, all, all afternoon. Um, logistics. If you have anybody on your team that would like to help with logistics, primarily Saturday morning. We don't really need a lot Thursday, Friday, making this a Renee and all three of my can left. Primarily Saturday morning. If that's about it. Can I help? As soon as the center, we're going to be there at 7 o'clock. They can come find. Any one of us in a logistics shirt or a committee shirt and say, hey, I'm here to help with the most dangerous question you can ask. You'll be leaving this thing. Um, so we need help with that. Again, all of this signage that I'm talking about, this map to relay thing, that's got to happen Saturday morning. So we need some teams to go out and disperse all of that stuff. Everybody's interested in helping put the long and iron bags together. Uh, and so just take care of that. So we need to put the sand in the bag. Get them out. They start that at 8 o'clock. So anybody needing service hours for school, that's a great, great opportunity to get those service hours in. We do have the Boy Scouts. We do have the Boy Scouts coming. We do have the paperwork that we need to fill out for you for that as well. Okay? One thing a little bit off uh, that just came up in the meeting Monday in New Orleans. Uh, our hope lodge, right there in New Orleans, if you haven't been one day take, take the time to go and visit. If you're not sure, just get in touch with us. We'll make sure that somebody there to show you around or one of us to go with you. They're in need of, they use a lot of the um, hotel type amenities, soaps, shampoos, and, you know, you go stay at a hotel, you be like, I feel like I'm paying for it, right? Um, if you have any of that type of stuff, you can bring it bank night, uh, or even at the event. Bring it, we'll collect it, and we'll get it over to the whole lot. So they seem to be running a little short this year than normal. Mm -hmm. I guess it's against the time for being on sponsored as much as they used to. The toiletry items, you know, toothbrushes that are in a pack, they just bring it in. Um, you know, unopened items, toothpaste, soap, shampoo, that type of stuff. If you remember to bring some of that at bank night, uh, and event night, we'll collect, we have collection spaces for that as well. Okay. 
questions, y'all. This this y'all have to I mean, you can ask me a bit, but I'll probably. <laughs> Ask one of us. One day, right? Is it going to be the same system, the number system? Or like, how do they turn their money? Do they get a number? It's going to be the same system, but I want to encourage y'all to come throughout the day. Okay. Once I'm here, I'm collecting money. So um, there's actually a deputy that's here full time now from HPD at the library. So I don't necessarily have to wait until a specific time deputy. So once I'm here at 11, you want to come on your lunch hour and bring money? Money for a dead dorm here and bring your lunch money. Um, with you all have is you can't sign. You know, if you decide to come that early, you may not, you know, get your insight, but you will get your apartment time to turn in your money. You get everything except your campsite. Have you ever thought that they were going to sign for it? No, 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 well, you can probably, this is your first time at several ones, so you can probably find yourself a little bit surprised by that, because we do actually get a good, a good, a good crowd that stays. Now, they wouldn't stay past midnight, but since we do a close ceremony at midnight, I think you'll be busy close to 11, 11.30. Uh, but, break, okay, so just make sure everybody, you can break camp anytime you feel like you need to, you just can't bring a beat. So if you've got to haul these things out, that's going to be, 1 a.m. or after COVID, sometimes it's midnight 1 a.m. So that's, that's, a, that's a problem we run into with some of these events, that, you know, some of the bigger things that come in. So we can talk about that offline and see how we can help you with that. But but no vehicle is going to come onto the track until everybody's gone. There's a lot of kids coming around. The event's not open. It's not open. So let's talk about that. You don't have to talk and figure something out for you. Don't ask me to remind everybody to the bank night. Please pre count your money before you get here. I know MJ mentioned a little while ago about turning coins into bills and all that, but also have your money counted. We will not count in front of you. When you come for bank night, we're taking your word for what you're telling us that you have. I'm going to have a printout of what we have already entered into the system. We're going to take what you tell us you have plus what you already had. We're going to give you a total. And then the bank actually counts it. We just call it to the bank and the bank tells us that are set up at Regions Bank actually make that count. So every now and again, not often, but every now and again, there may be a little bit of a difference between what you counted and what the bank counted, but I want to make sure that you know and you count because we don't have enough time during bank night to sit there and count on your team's money while you stand here and wait. So pre-count it, have coins into dollars, and we'll be good to go. Is there an ending time for bank night if people want to wait in time after they get off at 5 o'clock? We typically, this is the thing, the tellers at regions are waiting on us. And so I have been scheduled till 8. They, they can't start till 5 because they have to wait for the banks closed. So, they, so if you get off at 5, come, you know, the bank are <laughs> estimated will be working until about between 7 and 8. Well, I don't know you suffering income. Please come to us. No, no, no. I'm not All right, any other questions? Now, again, like I said, now the time. Let's get close to an hour. There's just a couple more things. All right, let's do dual prizes real quick, and then we'll have a quick little closing for you guys. All right, um, the last two numbers, 614. Right here. Right here. 625. 625, last three digits. I'm going to take it. 625. You lost your ticket. You lost your ticket. Oh, you lost your ticket. 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 You lost your Right next door to it. Let me move again. 